What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to look at Adrian 1996's incredible run where he gets a 1300 BC tech victory. For those that don't know, these are free for all deity runs, meaning that you're on a random map. So you don't have map knowledge. It's not a scenario or anything like that. You simply have to start the game and uh, try to win as fast as you can without any prior map knowledge. So basically it's single player free for all deity. And you simply try to win as fast as you can. Now my personal record's 400 BC, which is pretty damn good. Uh, but he has been hitting it out of the park late, as of late, not just with the Americans, but with many different, uh, he's been playing with the Aztecs, the Zulu. So definitely check out his channel. If you'd like uh, this kind of content, we do gaming. And we, we do a little bit of everything on this channel. So if you enjoy the content we're putting out here, I listen to my viewers, you know, they've been begging for Civ Rev content. So we're putting out some Civ Rev content. Subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. And uh, don't forget to, you got to go on Steam. I've been developing, you know, I haven't had time to work on all these world records. You know, the way this guy, Adrian has, he's in our Discord server. Join that as well if you'd like to discuss Civilization Revolution. But I've been doing game development as well. So, you know, I, I've been trying this new marketing strategy where I threaten people. Uh, I, I've seen the big, I've seen NBC and all these big players. Uh, they've been, they, they like to, they say, hey, if you don't buy my product, then you're dead to me. I'm not, so I've been trying that lately, seeing how, if that pushes up my metrics. So that's a new marketing strategy I've been trying out. So if you don't wish list, never grind online, you're dead to me. Actually, I'm kidding. But it's actually a pretty cool game I've been working on for the last five years. It's coming out in June, and it's going to be it's going to be indie game of the year, uh, at least to me, and to a lot of people. The people that have been playing it love it. It's a low budget game, but it's a very good game. You don't need the best graphics or good graphics are nice. We like graphics. We have we we enjoy good graphics, good sounds, uh, good sound the whole presentation right you want a nice presentation but you know i don't think people play chess for the graphics you know at the end of the day you want a good game a good strategy good strategy something that makes you think like civilization revolution and uh, that's enough blathering man let's just get this started <coughs> oh that's interesting did you know what i noticed it started on japan and it went over to the americans i i have always wondered if it mattered <laughs> is that just random, or is it like the seed like behavior of the game? Uh, I don't know. There's so many theories about this game. Now, what's curious is he got a great explorer, and as we know, he likes to plant immediately, and he gets the gold. He goes for the gold right away. In the previous game that I was watching, he picked up. Oh, that's not a good start. Doesn't matter though. We'll see how this goes. He just picked up a bunch of gold, so whatever. Couple of huts right there. So that he has 80 gold already. 92 gold. Holy cow. And horseback riding. And what's that thing called? Knights Templar? What's he gonna do with this guy? That's what I'm curious about. Because he's injured, so this puts him in a really precarious position. He sells it. Screw it. Not a bad decision. Oh, and he picked up a settler already. No, no, no. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Let's appreciate this for a moment. So, he had a bunch of gold. He got the Great Explorer for 50 gold. And then he picked up, uh, what was it? 50 gold from, no, he got 30 gold from a hut. Is that what it was? And then it pushed him up to, and then he got another 10 gold by selling his warrior. Is that what it was? My boomer brain is trying to keep up with all, everything that's happening so fast. It would take forever to go at normal speed, so it's worth it just to blaze through this. Okay, so we got a spy. What? Why is he turning that spy around? 
just to spread out. Seems to like spreading out in multiple directions. Which makes sense. You cover more things more quickly, right? Gotta stay hydrated for my commentary. Taking out another barbarian hut. Got two of them here. Curious to see what he ends up doing with that boat. Oh no. Oh, he can get that. He's gonna have to take out the warrior. You see this? <clears throat> so it started on Japan. Does that mean that Japan's gonna be in the game? You know, when he went to that screen where he picks his sieve, it started on Japan. Does that mean that they're always in the game? That could help. I don't think it matters. Gold. Picks up a caravan and finds a natural wonder. The beatings continue. Lots of barbarian huts, which is nice. 3400 BC, 3300 BC. Oh, he finds the Ark of the Covenant. It looks like the British are on the other side of this village. I guess this is a hut. I always get it confused. Hut, village? Picked up pottery, which is horrible. You really want gold in this situation. So Kyodil's wide open. He picks it up and gets ceremonial burial in the process. Not great, but okay. Decides to sell his spy. Looks like, did the British take one of those out? I think it may have. No, they did not. Are they gonna get monarchy from this? <clears throat> I think they're gonna pick up some gold here via diplomacy. Adrian chooses to pass. Passes on the Ark of the Covenant for now. Not a big deal. I don't. Ark of the Covenant's not that great in this game. It's kind of, it's kind of a fun one, but it's not really that effective. Oh wow, that's beautiful. So he's got City of Gold, and he also picks up another hut. Egyptians are in the game. Forty gold picked up from that hut. So three thousand BC. What are we doing? We're in researching writing. So when will he pick this up? Will he wait for medieval era to pick this up to get a little more gold? Hmm. 
Really? That was risky. Picked up Monarchy, though. You could definitely lose a three on two. So he's got how much gold? 290 some? That's a lot of gold. I don't think he even picked up the City of Gold yet. Going for code of laws. And I think he's gonna start expanding. I assume he's gonna need some horses running around so that he can start expanding. I don't know that he would that's even ideal for him. Oh my goodness. That's a great person, right? 500 gold milestone. Is he going to even bother with that? I assume he wants to start expanding immediately. In the previous video, he had a, an entire network of horses just standing around in perfect positions for expansion. Curious how he will handle this because he has to choose between positioning horses everywhere versus going for this gold milestone. I assume he's going to go with the position. I assume the expansion is the number one priority here. He's pumping out horses. Uh, he's got one on a boat. Oh, okay. Is he going to try to take him out? It's going to take a while. They continue exploring on their little island adventure. This is probably one of the more tactical aspects of uh, setting up these quick victories is positioning a bunch of units in such a way that you can quickly expand. You don't want to spend multiple turns. Like, you don't want to spend too long setting up all these settlers. You really want to roll it out as fast as money allows. He has a lot of money. So... And it may be good to go back and re and take a close look. We know that he got the cities of gold. But it may be pretty handy to go back and watch those early first couple turns, how we picked up so much gold. He picked up a lot. Just a combination of diplomacy, huts, natural wonders. Worked out really well. Picks, looks like he found School of Confucius. Looks like he's doing some positioning math. Trying to figure out what are some good spots to set set up his empire. Can be a pain. See how he's measuring. Measuring. Measure twice. 
cut once. Got another horse. He's probably a little con uh, anxious about where he's going to position everything because he knows he has a pretty good start in terms of gold. He has over 500 gold. It's 2700 BC. He's got two capitals. Well, three. Multiple huts. School of Confucius. Oh yeah, there's another reason you you sometimes want more than one AI left in the game. Another nice thing that the computer does is they can uh, backfill technologies for you. And not every, it's kind of a confusing, it works, the way it works is pretty confusing. Basically, if one of the AI opponents has a technology and you can complete it in one turn, it's considered trivial at that point. And you can actually get the technology for free. I believe that's how it works. So let's say you can get uh, masonry in one turn. Let's say you're making 50 tech per turn. If someone else has it, like the French, then you will get it for free at the end of the turn. So yeah, he, he's actually going to go for it. He's going for it. And he picks up Blitz. Picks up bronze working. So there's only one AI left, and he's about to get Code of Laws next turn. Okay. So he, he's not depending on backfilling in this game. He's, there's only one other AI out there, and I don't even know where they are. He's freaking out over the positioning of everything. I can just see it. I do this all game long. I'm like, uh, if I could put the horse here, it would be a little bit better. Oh, but then I couldn't build a city there, and that's a good spot. And I have to think about how many uh, science tiles I have access to, because that's more important than anything. Etc. Gets Code of Laws next turn, so he's trying to set this up as a one turn. He's probably going to pop out like 25, 30 cities next turn. We need that city counter on the screen. I like how it says barbarians with an exclamation point. Barbarians! Oh, there they are. Zulu? Yeah. Give us money! Yeah, he didn't have enough of that. Give him even more money. And then negotiates peace immediately. He's gonna get 10 turns of peace, and then that's, he's gonna ride that peace agreement all the way to a space victory. <laughs> it's 2600. He's la he's launching this thing in, in 1600. So we got 10 turns. He's going to be at peace the entire time. The only bummer is that city is blocking off some land over there. But it's not going to matter. At all. Look at that oil bubbling. Juicy oil. Here 
There's a great deal of deliberation going on here. Trying to set up the perfect... It's like setting up dominoes. Gotta make sure all those dominoes are set up perfectly. He puts a horse there. I think he's trying to figure out how to cover the central area over there. That could be two cities. That could be two cities. There's another city. Got a spy he can use. It's going to be tricky. So it'll be interesting to see what he actually ends up doing. There are quite a few ways he could go about this. He's trying to figure out. Let's just fast forward just a little bit here. He's, he tries to deliberate with his units. He ends up going over there. Picks up a great scientist as well, so that'll help. Oh, another hut, too. He's got a great explorer, great scientist. Plenty of tools to help him get a quick victory here. Switches over to Republic and goes with uh, literacy. That makes sense. Does not have currency yet. We'll see how he goes about that. Starts popping him out. Goes for... Okay, he's going to use the... Making use of the die right there. Sells his horse. Question is, where to position this? Uh, I hate when this happens. Terrain looks like garbage. Yeah, I guess that's about as good as it's going to get right there. is no good. Let's see what he does. Plants a city right there. But now what? Yeah. You kind of want it on the corner because there's so many s science tiles around that corner up there. You can get up to five science tiles. Right there you only have two or three and you're kind of fighting with the other city so I don't think he's like loving that. But apparently it didn't really matter in the end. Still got to 1300 BC. Remember that this isn't really a quality city strategy. There's a city strategy. There are two city strategies. There's a quality strategy and then there's a quantity strategy. Clearly we're going with the quantity but uh, I think the gamer inside of all of us kind of wants a quality city that looks nice, has nice tiles. I mean, look how bad that city is. One city tile, two desert. I mean, it's horrific. Doesn't matter, though, that because once you get industrialization, once you get corporation, you're getting 10 gold per turn. You're counting, right? Start counting. There's going to be a lot of cities. 40, 50, something like that.
That is a lot of land right there. See how many cities you could fit into that giant landmass? That's all going to get filled up. It's a landlocked city. Uh, what do you do with that? Maybe he'll do a production city. We'll see. Did he end up doing anything there? Doesn't look like it. He went elsewhere. Technically, the best possible arrangement is like just a grid where they're just spaced just like that. Those two cities are just two apart without any staggering. But of course, you're going to have terrible placement everywhere, but it maximizes. That's the, that's the tightest you can make the cities. Pops out one more settler. You take the spy down there. Oh wait, you didn't take the spy down there. The spy's right there. fill out that corner. I'll try to fast forward this a little bit when he's kind of making decisions just for the sake of learning from the strategy more than we don't need to see the deliberation quite as much. We'll kind of Fast forward through those moments. See what we can learn from this strategy. You too can launch a spaceship in 1300 BC. Just learn from the masters, man. See how they do it. So is the spy. Going doesn't need that anymore. Oh, really? It's an interesting position. gold does he have at this point? 167? Plenty of gold. Let's see what he does with those island units. It's always a little bit more painful to expand to those islands. 
It's hard to do it as quickly as you do it on the main continent. So it's 2500 BC. We've almost covered the entire continent. Looks like he's got 117 gold. Builds a, I don't know if he built that horse. Oh, he's starting to build roads. This part blows my mind. I never build roads ever when I play. And it's interesting to see him using them. Just for the sake of being able to plant a little bit earlier. He's researching literacy, still. Seems like he has so many cities, yet he's about to... He's still waiting to get literacy. Say the number of cities he had. Okay, there it is. Twenty nine cities already. It's in the bottom right. I was looking for it. Where the heck is it? I can't remember. No, it's down there somewhere. quite a few galleys. Not quite sure what he's planning to do with them. But we shall see. Literacy gives you that important plus one bonus. Don't... Did he get currency? <laughs> what? Oh, I guess he got it from the gold. He's going to actually research banking. Alright, let's see how that goes. a city here on the peninsula. Sells the boat. Again, this is the medieval era, so he's still at the point where he can build units and then sell them on the same turn for no loss. Americans are the only ones that can do that. Pop out one more settler here. Fix the tiles. Plants. Squeeze in one more right there if you wanted to. You don't want that culture. Culture is a waste of time. Sells the horse and plants. Right, look at this spot. Get a workshop going. Iron mine. A nice city. Hanging on to that explorer.
expand. Good idea. Bands once more to this peninsula. Nice little corner right there. It's a shame there's no die or anything like that. Scanning of cities, checking everything out. Oh, wow. There's another one. Is he going to rush a... Horseback? Fresh a horse. There is something. Finally burns his great explorer. Rushes one more settler. There's a city right there. You just die there too, so that's another nice city. <laughs> Rushed a horse and a settler just to Okay. Interesting. It's all about the quantity in this. seems like such a waste to build all these boats, but you have to remember that you can sell them at any time. Almost any time. Yeah, actually, I think any time, because they, you always have a person on the boat. So I think you can always sell them. For no loss. It's easy to forget. How much was that? 38 cities? 2400 BC. Parks' units, which is handy. Surveys the land. Finds one more unit to pop out. You can pop out two more cities down there. Goes for democracy. Did we miss something? Oh, he switches to banking. Uh, what do you switch to? Democracy. Just hanging out on this big old island. Seeing, obviously, he wants to save that hut. For uh, technology. Which doesn't always happen. He has at least two huts just sitting around. Maybe he'll find more. Sells the horse. And, yep, one more. He's going to go over there and expand. I don't know if there's any value in picking up Inkor Watt this kind of game I don't think so hmm. 
All right, 38 cities. Making sure everything's squared away. Oh, so at this point, he decides to actually pick up Ark of the Covenant. Uh, does it help him? I don't think so. Culture, you, the, the game doesn't last long enough to really make use of the culture that you get. It helps you with your borders a little bit. Because it makes it harder for the AI to mess with you. One more city. Sells the horse. Gonna run around with a caravan, I guess. So has a great explorer standing around. Takes the settler and runs over to the corner. There's a beautiful island. Could make a nice little island fortress. Impregnable. Continues his island expansion. Five cities on that island. What's interesting is he's in democracy, which means he's going from three down to one population when he's expanding. But that seems to be working okay for him. And in the previous game, he was doing it after he had 14 tech, after he hit the industrial area, which many started with four population. Sells everything. He's all done with those units. Probably wants to build. Yeah, here he goes. Builds a horse just so that he can plant immediately. And sells the galley. He's launching a spaceship in seven turns. Wait, where's this guy? He must be going for the island expansion. Where's the boat though? He's gonna build one? Interesting. Why'd he move the boat over there? Doesn't he have to pick that guy up? What did he mean by this? Archer. Is that an accident? Mm. 
Okay. So he has two huts and one scientist running around, so that's potentially three techs that he could pick up. I assume he wants to keep the scientist right there. He can plant a city there. But he doesn't have the population to expand there. Did he ever get irrigation? I feel like I don't remember that. You get banking this turn. Yeah. He's going to make this work, though. Right, got a bank. Yeah, there he got his 100 gold. Yeah, he hasn't got irrigation. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, wow. Dies over there. For those that don't know, irrigation is an important one because it gives you plus one to every city. How is he going to get a city there? Oh. So he burns the great scientist to get industrialization. And he's going to run that settler all the way over there. <laughs> Must want corporation. Loads up on the galley. And he'll disembark. Can only fit two oh. cities on that island. Wait. How many? One. He only has two huts available. There's one of them. Is he going to go for it? Yep. So he has industrialization and corporation. That's 10 gold for every city that he has. So what's next? University? Invention? Really? I thought he would go for uh, university. Okay. Great person, perhaps? Loads up another yet another settler. He's going to build on the on the northwest side of Zimbabwe. Quite a few islands over here. You can get the galleys over there. I'm surprised he hasn't picked up irrigation. <laughs> Wonder what the uh, thinking is there. Is he going for irrigation? Is that what it was? I think it was. Or invention. I can't even see. Okay, invention. Thank you. Spot for one city here. Nice little corner city. One more down there. Is he going to completely skip this? 
for electronics. Okay. What about irrigation? <laughs> I love getting irrigation. This is driving me crazy. Wait, what? Invention. He's going for invention again. Okay. Is he really going to launch a spaceship without researching irrigation? This is blowing my mind. It would be a massive boost to his science per turn if he got irrigation. He's got like 45 cities. It's a nice little island right there. Oh no. Now what? Selling things off. Doesn't need any more. This is an interesting strategy because it doesn't care about wonders at all. Are we going to get it? What are we getting? Okay. So if he researches that this turn, he's going to get a ton of gold overflow. Because if it only takes 70 re to research, and you have like 700 tech per turn or whatever, it, that you're going to get all of that extra science as gold overflow. off the caravan over 2,000 gold now so I think he really wants to get somewhere around 800 science per turn that's what you really need get a spaceship launched so he's gonna have to keep pumping out some cities the irrigation will definitely help with that navigation is gonna do anything for him he's, he's not going for the East India Company like he's really mulling this over he goes with irrigation yeah, it really boosts your science per turn, so he's going to have to go through every city after to make sure it's being smart. Usually is not smart. Is he going to go for advanced flight? Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> I still don't th So he has advanced flight, but not irrigation. Okay. Oh, is he going to... Is he going to pick up Atlantis and get irrigation? Yeah. <laughs> he picked up irrigation from... Uh, from Atlantis. I think you got masonry irrigation. That was nice. It saved him something, some time right there. Uh, 
at this point, what does he really need? Religion? No, he doesn't want religion. What are you doing? He's got a science max. Science maxing. He's getting really close to getting space flight at this point. He could possibly get it. Hmm. He needs like a great scientist or something like that. He's just maxing his cities here, so I'm gonna zip forward. City management, maxing out his science. Because he just picked up irrigation. And all of his cities grew. Oh my. You see that. He found another hut. Okay, so he doesn't have access to space flight quite yet because he does not have enough science per turn. Maxing the gold out a bit, uh, science a bit. This is going through and managing this. You gotta move one tile at a time. You never know what you're gonna come across. Be something juicy. You gotta fly over those uh, land tiles with your airplanes too. You could possibly pick up a natural wonder. Sure, why not? Sells the galley. He's all done with that. What's Zimbabwe thinking right now? They're like, <laughs> we got this. We're hanging in there. <laughs> um. Oh. Couldn't you pick up the East India Company from Anchor Wat? I think your highest, there's some logic to it. It's so uh, arcane, the way it works. It depends on what like your highest research tech is, some crap like that. That would be really sweet if you picked up East India, though, from Anchor Wat. Does your highest researched technology have to be like, I think if your highest is like university or something like that. Man, these bombers are awesome for expansion. Just fly them around. Look at this absolute lunatic. Counting the tiles there. For a second, I thought maybe I missed him building the East India Company. He didn't, though. He didn't build it in the last game either. Which really kind of blew my mind. I was like, what? Tech Victory? He didn't build East India? That's surprising. But yeah, apparently it's not really acquired. It's so optimized. Just by sheer quantity of cities.
That's about it, really. Some uh, city management here. Let's hit the road. Build that Magna Carta. So he's at 905 per turn, which is more than enough to get space flight. 59, 59 cities. Library? Why? Why the library? At this point. Am I missing something? Why would you rush libraries? I don't think you need them. I think you would want to save all of that for... You're going to need all that gold for a spaceship. I'm curious why he did that. So I think he's tactically building libraries at his best cities. Where he has die, for example. We'll certainly get a lot more out of that. Much better value. six sea tiles there, so that's really a nice spot for a library. If you're not using it, sell it, because you get all that interest as Americans. Every turn. Compounding interest, man. You gotta learn about this stuff. Milton Friedman, man. Religion? I think he's doing religion for overflow reasons. I don't think he actually cares about religion. He's got space flight available. I think he's going to go for the hut. Why courthouse? did that last game too. I don't know why he goes to courthouse. I don't know. Yeah, just sell. Why not sell that knight? So I get switched to space flight, right? Now at this point, he doesn't know if he's going to get it. But he got it. Yeah, man, I know the Angkor Wat's there. Are you crazy? So he has space flight. It's 1800 BC. So at this point, all he has to do is build the actual spaceship. So that's four propulsion units, a fuel unit, life support unit, and a habitation unit. It gets pretty expensive. So that's really one of the challenges, even if you get space flight on turn zero. The real challenge is trying to build all that. It gets expensive. This is set going to cost him 716. 1516 right there. It's one prop unit. He's going to look around for the best available production. Maybe he's going with courthouse because it makes it a little easier to read like how much available production there is. I'm not sure. He's going through the list looking for... He wants that hanging gar great wall of hanging gardens. Gonna rush that. Rush that habitation. Prop 
Dang it. Just looking for a good city to rush stuff. There's another one. Wouldn't you just want to sell everything at this point? Oh! <laughs> Look at that, there's another one. Mass media, dude. Mass media. Dude, don't you want to get mass media? Get the population, right? There's no reason not to get that at this point. See what his plan is. Use that guy, man. What are you doing with your gold guy? Use him, man. Not sure what he's doing there. Sell it. <laughs> trying to milk him for money. Uh, doesn't he have like two great explorers? Can he just use those? What's he doing? Oh, the habitation. What's he going to do over here? <laughs> he keeps looking at that bomber and the great explorer. I'm like, what is he doing? Okay. Oh, wow. Discovered a sea tile. That's hilarious. A smoky sea. Why, um, mass media, right? I don't know. Let's see. I think he's launching this turn, isn't he? Yeah, I think he is. This is, uh, takes two turns to get there, right? Or is it three? Uh, dude, I'm like so foggy on like how the timing works. So I was saying, mass media. Alright, so he's got his 59 cities. No, 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 okay. So he's launching the ship in uh, 1600 BC, and it arrives in 1300. That's right. It takes three turns for a fully full-speed ship to get there. Which means that he didn't quite get there. Not on the last turn. So. Looks like we got some city optimization going on here. Great artist. He's still planting cities, and maniac. He wanted an even 60. Why 
didn't he burn the great explorers the last turn? What was the point of that? Did he forget? Adrian, leave a comment. Did you forget to use the great explorers? I'm not sure what you were doing there. It seemed like you wanted to use those the prior turn? I, I wasn't sure if maybe you just were saving them for some reason. Alright, so he finally gets this bad boy off the ground. But, uh, he's the final thing he needs, right? 4111. You need 4111. There it is. Negative 13. I like what it says. Look at that. I love this. Let's get a little free shot. It says negative 1300. Couldn't have they like fixed that a little bit? Negative 1300 AD. Here. Remove the webcam. Here, you can get a little screenshot of that if you want it. You get that? There you go. Oh, well, let me fix it. That sun is awfully weak looking. They could have done a better job, don't you think? There you have it. 1300. It's insane. So we can gotta fast forward through this just to check it out, the arrival screen. Probably like losing his mind right now. It's like, I can't believe it. Oh, so yeah, that's the bug with this is that it won't show the victory screen until you get to year zero or whatever. So it's kind of dumb. So that's it, guys. Uh,. That's the victory. Let's let it keep playing here. Uh, very impressive. Here's what I want. I want you to go and try what this guy, Adrian, did. Definitely check out his channel. Um, and let us know if you have any success doing using this strategy. I'm going to try it myself when I get the time. I've been working on Never Grind Online, of course. But I'm totally looking to give this a shot and see if I can pull off what he's doing. And it looks simple, right? Like we, when he's playing, you're like, ah, that doesn't look too crazy. You just set up a bunch of cities, build your horses, run around. Nothing that crazy, but uh, he's executing uh, in, a, in a very precise, very efficient way. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to rewatch this like four or five times just to figure out what the hell he did that was so obviously he had a lot of things go very right he had a lot of huts he got text from him every time which is pretty much a necessity it's a little bit of an RG, rng element you don't have a lot of control of so when it doesn't happen it's annoying but hey you just play the best game that you can play uh and it seems like that early Plant by a barbarian hut thing appears to work really well. Uh, building, even roads can be pretty handy. It looks like he leverages those from time to time. So, yeah. Like I said, give this strategy a try. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to try it and see what I can do. Check out his channel. And, uh, yeah, subscriber, you're dead to me. Uh, that's the new joking <laughs> it was an original tweet that someone someone threatened someone she was joking around but i just think it's a funny thing a, f a, a weird way to try to uh, persuade people anyway hope you enjoyed the video and uh discuss we'll discuss it more in the discord and i'll link it in there as well so i'll see you guys next time later